Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very exciting video to share with all of you. We'll be highlighting the main similarities and differences between two amazing fields within healthcare, that is the medical field and the dental field. So in this video, it's my hope that you figure out what's best for you in terms of medical school or dental school and all you need to know about that. Let's do it. So for those of you that don't know already, my name is Austin Wynn. Welcome to the channel and I'm happy to have you here. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Today we're discussing medical school versus dental school as I mentioned and to help me out on the dental side of things, I'm bringing in my special guest, my girlfriend, Kristen. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen. Um, I'm a dental student at Marquette University School of Dentistry. And we're excited to share the similarities and differences, the pros and the cons, help all of you make the best decision on whether it's medical school or dental school. So we hope you enjoy. All right, so we're gonna start with some of the similarities, but before we get into it, we just wanna both say that dentistry and medicine are just really great fields and whatever you choose, we think that you'll be making a great choice. We're speaking from our own experiences and we just hope that this video can be helpful to all of you. So some of the major similarities, of course, they're both in the healthcare field, but I think most importantly, you get really great patient interactions and get to help people in a very special way. And now Kristen's gonna talk about some of the basics to both medical school and dental school. So some of the basics are like medical school, dental school requires four years of undergraduate studies. Um, so you need your bachelor's degree before you apply to dental school, similar to medical school as well. You don't necessarily need to be in a specific major that you can major in anything as long as you have the core classes that dental schools require to get in. Another similarity is after graduating undergraduate studies, dental and medical school are four years. Yep, just before you start dental school, you'll take an exam called the DAT, right? Right. And then for medical school, it would be the MCAT, the Medical College Admissions Test. So, so far we're looking at four years of undergrad and four years of grad school, eight years total. And there are also postgraduate options for both medical school and dental school. We'll get into that during this video as well. In the medical side, there's over a hundred different specialties and subspecialties. And on the dental side, there's nine. Which is really unique. I personally didn't even know there were subspecialties in dentistry yeah. um, before meeting Kristen, so I think that's really interesting. In regard to a couple more similarities, within medical school and dental school curriculum, both schools start the first two years largely in the classroom with a little bit of integration into the hospital, and then the following two years are gonna be in the clinic mostly. All right, so I mean, that's most of the similarities. Now we'll talk about some of the differences and what makes each field unique, so stay tuned for that. So we're just gonna talk about some differences between the two fields. Obviously, one difference is that they're completely different fields. <laughs> I mostly deal with the mouth and maybe head and neck regions, but primarily I don't really know anything else about the, the rest of the body besides how it correlates with the mouth area. And the yeah. Totally, and we cover pretty much everything else outside of the oral cavity, we still learn some of the anatomy, but the reason why medical field has over a hundred different specialties and subspecialties is because the human body is so vast and there's so many differences, and so we need specialists in every single area to make sure that we're providing the best care. So of course things like neurology for the brain, cardiology for the heart, dermatology for the skin, orthopedics for the muscle and the bones, and so on and so forth. Um, and we don't have anything that covers the oral cavity. We leave it up to our well-trained dentists, so. Yeah, and even within the dental field, there is so much variation between different specialties as well. We have nine different ones, which is a lot less in comparison to the medical <laughs> field, but those nine specialties are pretty different. Like we have endodontics for root canals, which is primarily what they do. And we have orthodontics, which a lot of people have braces over the years or just moving the teeth around um, and so that they can form in the correct function and oral surgery which it does have a lot to do with dentistry you do have to know that bread and butter of dentistry but it also has a lot to do with the medical field as well so that one is one that's a little bit 
in between. Yeah, this is a really unique specialty actually. It's called OMFS, oral maxillofacial surgery, and I didn't know much about it until Kristen told me about it. Actually, these OMFS specialists go to dental school first and then they get their MD or medical degree afterwards. So they have both degrees and so they're doing surgery throughout the mouth. It's super interesting. And I thought it was so unique that I included a schedule here and you can take a look at it. It's super intense. It's like a six year graduate program after dental school, which includes getting your medical degree and also learning um, surgery within the oral cavity. It's a very unique track and it's interesting that you can only go through dentistry first and then get the MD and do OMFS. You can't go to medical school first, then go to dentistry school and be OMFS. So if you know that's what you want to do, definitely look into that more and wish we could give you more information, but neither of us are obviously going uh, into that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but since we're talking about different specialties, it's another big difference between medical school and dental school is that for medical students, we are required to do a residency, which ranges from three years to the shortest residency, things like family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, and then as long as seven years, things like neurosurgery. So everything in between is something between three to seven years where we're required to go to residency to further our training and to further specialize because there's so many different areas we can specialize in, as mentioned earlier. Yeah, and um, for dental school, it actually isn't required that you have to go to residency. But now it's becoming a more and more popular option. About 35 to 40% of all dental students actually end up going to residency. So you can go to a general practice residency, which is a GPR, or an AEGD, which is hospital and um, private practice based, where you would learn both settings and maybe a little more in depth about what to do in emergency care. Also the nine different specialties where usually GPR or AEGD would help boost your chances of going to a specialty residency but also some people apply right away to specialties as well. Alright so the next part of this video we're going to be talking about the cost differences between medical school and dental school. Instead of looking at the differences year by year in tuition, since we saw that most dental schools and medical schools range between 40 to 50,000 per year in tuition, we decided to look at the average loan burden for a medical student versus a dental student at graduation. The reason being is because there's so much variability in terms of costs, such as housing, right? There's differences in cost living in New York City versus another rural area, and also there's so many different factors that we're going to touch upon right now, which will contribute to the total loan burden on one student versus another. So for a medical student, that loan burden after four years of medical school was over $240,000 a year. And for dental students, lucky us, our loan burden was around a little over 300000 I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just so fun. But probably the reason for that being that dental school tends to be a little bit more expensive than medical school because in dental school we actually buy our own instruments that we use at school. Not necessarily in the clinic that we'll use them, but I know that um, we, there's a simulation lab in every dental school and you use, you buy your hand pieces, you buy all the equipment that you need to use um, to learn the practice and later on you get to use those tools that you buy in private practice or wherever you end up but we pay for those initially so I know that we paid I think around 15,000 to 20,000 the first year just for instruments alone which is quite a bit obviously you're investing in your future so yeah lucky for us medical students our major cost is probably a stethoscope it runs a couple hundred dollars and since I'm planning on applying to surgery, I hope I won't need it much longer, but we'll see what happens. Here on the channel, we never like to end on a sour note about how much debt we're going to be in and all of our classmates and colleagues, but let's talk about the earning potential in both medicine and dentistry. So in terms of medical specialties and their average income per year, here's a 2021 report from Medscape that's showing the average income from all the different specialties on the medical side. And then there's also a 2018 published stats on different dental subspecialties and their average earnings, which is likely going to be a little bit lower because in 2018 we couldn't find a more up-to-date one, yeah. but due to inflation it'll probably be a little bit higher than what it's showing here. And so now some of you might be thinking, wow, there's a huge discrepancy between medical incomes versus dental incomes and we already mentioned to you earlier that dental students have a higher 
loan burden than medical students, so why would you go to dentistry school? So I just wanna bring it back to all of you, what we talked about earlier in the video, and that's that medical students are required to go to residency, and that can be from three to seven years, and the average resident earns $58,000 a year, and you'll be making that from anywhere between three to seven years, as I mentioned. And as I mentioned before, um, you don't have to go to residency as a dental student. So once you're done with dental school, you can go straight to working as a dentist. And the median salary is 150 k per year. And that's just the median. It really varies across the U.S. But the reason why we don't necessarily need to go to residency is as dental students in the last couple years of dental school, you're in your clinical years, which is actually pretty different than the medical clinical years. As dental students, we actually have our own patients and you're really working as a dentist pretty much on your patients. Um, obviously with some supervision, you have a head doctor or head dentist who is in charge of you and supervises your work. Obviously they have to have it checked off by them every time you finish something. But for the most part, you're really doing hands-on fillings and crowns and dentures and all those things <laughs> that is so great about dentistry. You're really doing that hands-on with your patients and your patients, you really get to know them in the next two years on a very personal level. You're your desk receptionist per se and you're doing all the jobs in the office for yourself pretty much. Yeah, and from what I've heard, you know, of course, as a third and fourth year medical student, you're doing a lot as well. You're getting a lot of patient interactions. You're really involved in the clinic and you very much treat patients directly as well. However, it is a lot more supervision from your residents and your attending. And so there's very little as a medical student that you would do without any feedback or supervision from another resident or physician. However, from what I've heard in dentistry school, a lot of times you will do things on your own and then you'll get things checked off and approved and looked at after it's done. But a lot of times you'd be drilling by yourself and it might not be something you're super <laughs> comfortable with right away. Not at first. Yeah, and so that's very <laughs> similar to what it is like in residency. And so that's kind of why we think that there's a difference into why dental students don't have to go to residency because they're third and fourth year. Yeah. They're doing what's similar to our first and second year, uh, what you'd do as a resident in a medical field, just a big difference between the two fields. Yeah, and generally I just think dental school, it's like you go in and you're right away being hands-on. It's a lot of hand skills, so um, hands-on, a lot of your dental classes are doing it on mannequins before mm -hmm. you have your own patients and you really get to know your job. And so yeah, a couple other differences just in terms of general workflow. Uh, we mentioned the average salaries before between physicians and dental specialties, right? And it seems like pretty obviously that the medical specialties are making significantly more amounts of money per year. But I just want to keep in mind that they definitely put in the work for those because the average hourly um, work week for a dentist was about 35 hours a week. And that was reported in 2019, yeah. whereas for physicians in 2021, they reported about 50 hours a week on average, and that's just for attending. So during your residencies, as mentioned, which is three to seven years, with an average salary of just $58,000 a year, you'll be working upwards of 60 to 80 hours a week. Recently, the ACGME made a requirement that 80 hours a week would be the maximum for residents. And I can tell you from what I've seen from residents and what I've heard from my people above me, they definitely work those 80 hours a week and put the work in. So you're working quite a bit more in medical school, residency, and um, as an attending than you would as a dentist. So I'm sure dentists, if they put in an extra 15 hours, if they wanted to, <laughs> they could be earning similar amounts to physicians as well. So something to keep in mind for all of you. Uh, so just to highlight a little bit more about the job market, I think the biggest difference is that in medicine, maybe decades ago, private practice was more of a prominent thing, but as of late, there's been a decrease in the amount of private practice in medicine as it's becoming more and more regulated and more physicians are joining groups or being uh, employed under the hospital. Dentists are still primarily in private practice. I'm pretty sure it's like 70% or a little more than that go into private practice and it's a lot less regulated by the government and I think that's really known in the medical field. The dental field in general has just changed so much even in the last 20 years. I spoke to some people from the class of 19 1999 and it was just completely different than how it is today so I think we haven't quite 
caught up with like the government regulation yet and so most are private practice and there's just a lot more room for your own input in your practice yeah totally but of course at the end of the day the decision is up to you and i hope that this video was able to provide a lot of you know good information general tips and just facts about dental school versus medical school and our own experiences with each of them but we hope this helps you make um, the right decision for yourself and so briefly we can talk a little bit about why we each chose our specific specialties and what we're thinking about going into and hopefully that can also help you as well so i'll just start off uh, i think medicine for me i thought it was always a really great way to just help people i know it might sound very generic but i think that when you're in the position of a physician you really get to help people not just like helping out with a simple task but helping them in a position where they're most vulnerable and willing to trust you and i think that that patient interaction and communication has always been something that stood out to me uh, i'm interested in applying in orthopedic surgery so just being able to help people have the ability to do things and move around, I just feel like there's so much joy that comes into being able to be involved in that. And I'm also someone that likes to see, you know, the different results and the fruits of my labor. So being able to do a procedure or a surgery, follow up with a patient in clinic and just see them doing so much better and being so much more happy with what they can do, uh, that's something that really stood out to me. Um, and for me, I think there are a lot of facets as to why I chose dentistry, but initially I chose to be a dentist when I was in high school and my main reasons were just I think I could rationalize why dentistry. Um, dentists have a lot to do with their hands and a lot of dentistry is hand skills and sculpting with your hands. Um, so I really liked art and so I started my own little business when I was 12, sculpting these little miniature foods out of clay and that was a big reason why I went to dentistry actually because not only the business aspect of it that I can own my own private practice in the future but also the artistry behind it there is actually a lot of things that you do in dentistry that you probably wouldn't even think of a dentist doing but you kind of learn that like even denture making is an art form in itself so I think business the art part of it it, but also I think the lifestyle kind of fit what I wanted like maybe fewer hours working <laughs> and owning my own practice possibly being able to have a family along with that work-life balance I think is something that is really great yeah definitely and I'm sure that that's possible in other fields as well yeah. and makes it go down to what we said before. The decision's up to you and there's so many different factors, but we just hope that our stories uh, could be helpful to you in making that decision. So thank you so much for watching and staying tuned. If you like this type of content or want to hear more about dentistry or anything like that, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get Kristen on the channel more. But other than that, we'll be back to more medical school related things. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. See you later. Bye.